You're ready? I can't see. I have my screen on me so I can see what I'm showing and how it looks. So I can't see you very well. <laughs> All right. Okay, here it goes. I wish it would do the side by side. Okay. Hi everyone. Welcome back to the Codependent Knitters. This is my friend Lisa. And this is my friend Dawn. And together are we're we actually, Codependent Knitters. Are we pointing at each other? Yes. On your screen? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're okay. the Brady Bunch. Yeah. So just two of us. <laughs> um, we're coming to you from Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. And we've been away for a little while just because of self-isolating. And um, this is our first attempt at recording on Zoom. So we hope this works. And uh we did a little test yesterday and the audio and video looked good. So if, if it's not top quality, we apologize. This is the best we can do right now. And we're just making it work, right? No, winging it. Winging it. Yeah. So we've been away for a while. <laughs> we have no road trips to talk about because we can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Although Lisa did, if you look just behind me, that poster. <laughs> Lisa did a, a drive-by drive um, ding-dong ditch. She, she knocked on the door and took off and left that on my, there's like a long window beside my door. It was so sweet. Cheered me up. Thank you, Lisa. I'm keeping that. <laughs> I, miss, I miss not being able to go on road. So, I miss being near people. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Like we've actually done... We did a, a door a door drop exchange of a few things a few days ago, and it was just nice to actually see your face from you know a little a little closer, not on screen. Yeah, not flat. So hopefully things improve and we can get back to a little bit more normal. We've been going um, for walks in our neighborhood, so you know my husband and my son and I, and um, there's a little park. Like our neighborhood's kind of isolated on the edge of the city, so there's no traffic through here unless you live here and there's a lot of people out walking and it's great because we can walk on the opposite side of the road nobody gets too close to each other and there is a little park area um at, on the edge of our neighborhood it's a, it's actually a drainage pond but there's usually wildlife and there's a playground which is closed right now but we were walking to the park i haven't told you this story lisa this was probably about a month ago we were walking to the park my son and I and uh, so there's a path that goes down right and they can like the city can take trucks down there if they need to do work or whatever but when it's not when they're not doing that they have these um, metal sort of a uh, gate that you have to go through so it kind of looks like you know when you go to the grocery store and they have those it's like the um, saloon door that pushes it's like the metal u-shaped thing right it's not the turnstile but it's like it you just push your cart and it opens up so there's two of these big, they're huge because obviously they need to stop vehicles. So there's two of these big metal things. And then there's a space in the middle where you can walk between them. So we're walking along and I don't know what I was thinking. I like slammed into this big metal gate. I was like, oh, <laughs> Jack's laughing. He's like, what is, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? And I said, I, don't, I had it in my head. It was like the grocery store where you push against it and it would, <laughs> it would open. So like full tilt slam, holy macaroni. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought you'd like that story, Lisa. <laughs> you know me. So that was, good. That was yeah, really so good. I, like I, I only did that once. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then of course, when we went, the three of us with my husband, Jack brought it up and had to tell him. <laughs> what I did when I was walking down the path so <laughs> oh I could just I may not his face his face <laughs> would be nice, you what he was like, what are you doing <laughs> what is wrong with you <laughs> yeah that was fun so yeah that's we just we've gone for a few little drives like just there's a few times we just needed to get out of the house right like you know mm -hmm. and uh and what about you guys how have you been coping because your hubby's working at home too <laughs> My husband is working at home constantly. Um, yeah, he's been doing a lot of uh, conference calls and a lot of webinars and all sorts of stuff. So he's been pretty busy. I, we usually take turns, but 
he usually goes for the big grocery shopping and I might do a smaller one at a smaller market here in town. Um, just because I don't, it's a small market. So they're pretty good at social distancing. Um, like you said, yeah. I went for a drive to see um, my husband's parents, which was kind of, it was nice. We got away and we weren't there long enough because we had to be home to go to the bathroom. We had to be home to eat, you know, so we just stopped and, yes. stopped and kind of yelled across the, the yard at them. And it was nice. So. That's a big consideration, right? Like if you go anywhere, like you, you can't use the bathroom. We went for a drive. We just went for a drive. We didn't get out of the vehicle, but we went to Grand Bend just because from here, it's a beautiful drive along the lakeshore, right? Like, so we went yeah. for a drive and I said to my husband, I said, we got to head back. I said, I am, I had to put like, we've been gone long enough that I'm going to have to go to the bathroom before we get home. Right. Because we're out. Yeah. We drove past there and we drove for a while and it didn't matter whether it was clean or not because there was nothing open for you to go. Nope. Oh, yeah. Whereas the 401, apparently, all the, the en routes and the trucking stops, apparently they're still open, which is great if that's, you know, because we rely, yeah. right, we're relying so heavily on uh, the trucking industry right now. We probably need to get push, pushing on, right, and get through the stuff because yeah. your husband, has a, he has a conference call this afternoon. It's a call. It's a call. So okay, not a video. Yeah. Okay, so we can take hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try not to. We know what we have to do, Lisa. We have to talk about our knit alongs. Yes, we do. We just uh, we did we just did happy stuff two seconds ago. So yeah. Yeah, we picked before we pick. We talk about the winners of the ones that just closed. Um, we should talk about our new one. Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah. Do you want, I've got the details written down. Do you want me to go through it? You do it. Okay. So we are having a knit along of Robbie Lachlan's patterns. So Robbie Lachlan is a gentleman in Ontario. He's a designer. He's a very talented knitter. And he's been working in this industry for a while and knows his stuff. And um, he caught our attention because he posted um, a fundraiser he was doing for Ronald McDonald House uh, Charities in Toronto. So Robbie's nephew, Liam, and I, I can talk, he's posted this on his, his feed, so I can talk about it. His nephew, Liam, um, was in the Children's Hospital in Toronto, just recently went home. Yay, congratulations, Liam. But he was there, and so of course, and Ronald McDonald House, um, for anyone who's maybe in, in another country and doesn't know, they're a, ch they're a charitable organization that has um, housing facilities near uh, children's hospitals in a lot of different cities so that families can stay like for free and it costs a lot of money to house them they also try and feed them there are kitchens there that the families can use but etc so Robbie was offering his pattern book called architecture shape and surface which you can find on Ravelry and it has 12 patterns in it and there's there's cowls mittens um, a couple of shawls there's a little bit of everything he was offering it for $5 and all of the proceeds were being donated to Ronald McDonald House. So Lisa and I, you know, we talked about it quickly and uh, like I, I bought it and I bought a copy of the pattern book for gifts for a couple people. And then I said, you know what, let's do a knit along and hopefully encourage people to pick up his patterns. Um, so we've launched a knit along. It'll, it's gonna, we're going to leave it open for a few months because there are so many patterns available. And he also, in addition, has a number of individual patterns. And so we're doing the Robbie KL knit along. Um, that's his Instagram handle at Robbie KL, Robbie Lachlan. And um, he, he has donated $2,500 to date to Ronald McDonald House. If you don't knit but would like to support his campaign, if you go to him on either Facebook or Instagram, he actually has now a separate link for fundraising um, in honor of Liam. And you can just make a donation to Ronald McDonald House Charities. So that's really special. So we just really love that, wanted to support Robbie. And gosh, he has like amazing patterns. So there, um, I've already knit two that I'm gonna tell you about today. Uh, yeah, so people are already like casting on some of his shawls and, um, we hope you can join us. Like I said, we'll probably leave that open like into the summer. Hey, like, yeah, I we, we don't have a, we don't have a, a, a certain end date yet. Cause it's just yeah. fun. 
with the way yeah. things are, with the way things are right now, I would probably just leave it until the summer. Yeah. But we'll probably in another month or two, um, we'll, we'll have to just reward someone for their participation. Pop in there. Yeah. So speaking of rewarding for your participation, we closed our self-striping sock bit along mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And we drew a couple winners just before recording, so I don't have to edit all that out. But we did draw a couple winners. The first winner was uh, entry number 45, who is Nitty Turtle 3, who is Trish. Congratulations, Trish. We'll put a picture of her project on the screen. Oh, and so Trish is going to win uh, a skein of, this is Desert Vista Dye Works. It's her bien base it's a sparkle sock oh you kind of see sparkles a little bit when i turn it and the colorway is called Alyssa zombody edwards it's a four stripe four stripe self striping and she has speckle stripes in her self striping so that's that's for trish our second winner is number it was entry number 91 who turned out to be tracy trace 44 Yay. Yay, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations, Tracy. And also we have another um on the Viso sock base, Desert Vista Dye Works. And the colorway is called Lemon Blueberry Cake. And it's a four striping. It's really nice. There's it's like a, a special It's a navy, right? There's a that got darker royal, royal to navy. Um lemon uh and she says four striping so i think a white maybe and then there's a speckled stripe in there as well i believe so we'll just let you have a good look at that so that's for tracy and um these were generously donated by desert mr dye works so just again thank you so much um she was asking for podcasters that were interested in some support for prizes and we wrote her a letter and she just, yeah, it was fantastic. She sent us a few things. So thank you so much. We are really thrilled to have these and be able to give them away. Um, and probably things like she's out of the States. So these may be yarns that, you know, Canadian knitters might not have like see that often or may not have ever purchased. So, and it's nice yarn. I've knit with Desert Mr. Dyworks before. It's really nice to know this. So those two. We, um, we started the 52 weeks of socks knit along and it's going to go on for, for a year for 52 weeks, but, um, we already have 99 entries in the FO thread, which is amazing because you can enter, uh, it doesn't have to be a pattern from the 52 weeks of socks book, which I didn't bring in here, but if you do the 52 weeks of socks, any pattern from there, you should be entering twice in the FO thread, you get two entries. And then any other pair of adult socks, you get an entry. So we picked just a random uh, winner, and that uh, was number. Though I didn't write down on the number, but I got it. Hang on, I took a screenshot. Oh, it's right here in front of me. Number twelve. I still have the screen open, Lisa, on my iPad. So it was number twelve. Who is Crafty Amber? Congratulations, Amber. So Amber, we're going to send you a skein of Codependent Knitters by Timber Yarns, because we still have a few tucked away. We do have one more uh, make-along that, that uh, closed, and it was the Whip, Whip, Whip Your Whip make-along. And that was for any whip that you started before 2020, so anything goes. And we, uh, it was supposed to close April 1st, you got a bonus month out of that. And we picked... Winner num was number number six, entry number six, who was V Shaw Seven, whose name is Vicky. Vicky's been participating in our um, knit alongs, make alongs. She's been a viewer for a long time. So, Vicky, uh, you are going to receive. We have a pattern, the Katie shawl, which is from Cozy Up Knits, and this was given to us courtesy of Ginger Snap. Uh, when we did their pop-up shop last summer because they are uh, they partner with Cozy Up Knits a lot and we're also going to send you a little pack of mini skeins so these are from these are from Desert Mr. Diverts and it's the Zom Bodies of Oz mini skein set so they're all different like Oz themed 
Yeah. yeah, so you can check out the colorways. So these are all the colorways. There's quite a variety. And I, they're, they would all be self-striping. So um, you could have a lot of fun with those. You could do heels and toes in these or just put them in the middle of a sock or put them in a scruffy blanket or do whatever you want. So yeah, so we'll get those out to you. Vicki, congratulations. In touch with us, everyone. Um, make sure we have your mailing address and we will get these into the mail to you. Okay, so congratulations, everyone, and let's get to the good part. Okay, Lisa, you have an FO. I do. I have two. I'm going to start with this one. Okay, so I did, I knit the Avalanche by Heidi Kiermaier, and I did it, and I'm going to show you a quick picture. That's one I did, and I did it in Eco Plus in the turtle color. Surprise! <laughs> Wait till you see it. So is it the great is it the great gray turtle? Right. <laughs> so I um I did it. My modification though, I didn't like the eyelets on either side of the panel, so I dropped the eyelets. Um, and I just added a couple of extra purl stitches to give it a little space, and I knit it all on a six millimeter. So yeah, so here it is here. Ready? It's beautiful. Yeah. Back, so yeah. back up a bit. There's the green. Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. Yeah, so I love it. Beautiful, beautiful. And I like the design down the middle. But do you see, yeah. I just didn't like the eyelet because I like a crisp line there. So yeah. So that's it. So I, I it's a very warm sweater, so it'll have to wait till fall or this week. Did you notice it was snowing? Yeah, this afternoon. Yeah. So Crazy. yeah, I like it. I love it. Yeah, it was a it. super easy knit. She's very straightforward in her patterns. Um, she does have a little bit of charts for you to fill in the letters, but I love it. I think it's awesome. So yeah. So what you got, girlfriend? I have a sweater. I'm wearing it. It's hard to see. This is my super simple summer sweater. Let me just stand up. I absolutely love it. I'll put in a picture of me wearing it, like so you can see it properly. Because um, I did get a really nice picture a few days ago when it wasn't snowing. I know. And, <laughs> crazy. And okay, so. It's a super simple, super simple summer sweatshirt by Hoagie, and I did a knit along with Leo and Roxy. Actually, I didn't finish in time, but now the little red mitten is doing the knit along, so yay, I can post it in that. Um, this is the pattern. It was actually striped, and I just thought big wide stripes on me aren't something I usually gravitate towards, so I did a solid. So this is their Leo and Roxy's wool cotton blend. It is, well, it's on here. I think it's 70% 70, 70 Peruvian eco wool. I'm blown out there. Mm. And 30% organic cotton. And they, these are some of the dyed colors. So they do have several natural colors. And this one has been hand dyed by Carrie and Jolyn. And the color is called Amethyst. And it's a beautiful purple. In the photo that I insert, you can see the color a little bit better because it's, it's really bright out today. So it's a little washed out in here, but if I sit like this, you can see it's just a gorgeous, and it's kind of a heathered purple because of the, the fiber content. So I love it. Um, I made size, there's a really good range of sizes in this. Okay, she doesn't actually give them sizes, but I made the one that was for the, oh, size XXL. I initially was going to do the three XL, and then after doing my navy sweater, um, I didn't. I realized that I didn't need as much bust ease as I had originally thought. So I made it for just a few inches bigger than my bust. So that with the two XL, I did buy extra yarn, so that's why I have some left over because I um, wanted to make sure it was long enough, and I just wanted a little more yarn than what the yarn the pattern called for. Um. Everything else, the pattern was fantastic. Um, I did, I did lifted increases instead of the. I think it was a make one left. 
uh, just because I love them. I think I mentioned that last time when I talked about it as a whip. And I did the helical method for alternating skeins. So there's no carried yarn up, you know, anywhere where I alternated. And I did need to alternate. Like it's, it's hard to see. You can't see it on the screen. But I can just tell by um, certain areas that I might have had some almost a striping effect. Um, who knows? But it worked beautifully. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. I don't know what else to say. It's the pattern, the, the model that um, is in the pattern was knit in a wool cotton worsted weight blend. Um, I don't know the, if the fiber content was different than the 70-30. This is really warm. This is not a summer sweater for me. This is a right now perfect sweater. <laughs> but in the evenings or if you were, you know, if it was a cool day, it's not, um, it breathes, right? Wool cotton. Uh, so, you know, it's a good sweater. You could throw it on if there was a, a, if it was a cool breezy day. And here in Sarnia, we get breezes off the lake that can be quite cold even in the summer. So, but it's, it's just, I don't know what else to say. I love it. So a lot of people are loving it. And um, I know people have done it with different stripes or just stripe in the yoke or whatever you want. You can, you can go nuts with this pattern, but I love it. I would, I would knit this again, easy. It's, it has a split hem that's hard to see. You can see it, I think, in, in the photo of me wearing it. Um, what else can I say? I don't know. Have I said it enough? Did I say that I love it? I love it. Excellent pattern. Do you have another FO? I do, but I, from the sounds of it, I think I might have to make that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, you totally do. <laughs> I love me a split hem. Yeah, but I'm actually, I actually have some other yarn that I, I could use to make another one. Oh, there you go. I think yeah. I'd like to do that. I just don't know what color I would do it in because their naturals are kind of brown, not gray. Yeah, they're, they're, they're brown toned. Yeah. Okay, so you know what, Lisa, they have one. I forget the name of the color. It's a, it's a blue, but it's like a dusty mm -hmm. denim mm -hmm. blue. It's really nice. Mm. It's really nice. It's not like blue, blue, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so my next one was a uh, test knit. It was the, the trilogy by um, Anne Haas, Annie Haas, This Bird Knits. So yeah. So she, uh, as she called for testers, I thought, you know what? I have this yarn sitting around the house that I don't know what to do with. And I'll use that. And it's a Jameson. Aaron Waite Heather in the colorway Tarragon. I think I'm gonna. You're in a green kit. I know, right? So yeah, so that's the color. That's what I used and. You have that in stash because I don't remember being, I don't remember you buying that since I've known you. This is from one of the first kits I bought. Way back. Which would mean it's probably like 20 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's deep stash. Because I've been here 10 years. I was in Muskoka for 10 years. And I think I bought it the first one or two years that we were in Muskoka. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. That's, that's some age stash. That one's vintage stash. Vintage. Oh. It is. <laughs> so, here it is. It's, oh, wait, it's done. It's done. You got to get some pictures of that. You know what? I'm going to get pictures of this one and my avalanche. I'll get them and I'll send them to you and you can pop them in maybe if you have a okay. chance. So this one is kind of neat. It's, um, I think this would be like a jacket sweater. Do you know what I mean? Like you throw on and you do, do your running around town and whatnot because it's so yeah. comfortable when you put it on. And it's so, but I was kind of taken with this. I like that. Oh isn't, yeah. Isn't that neat? It is. It's like a different ribbing and it's on the bottom, it's on the sleeves and it's on the neck. But it just, I don't know, it really kind of spoke to me. I thought it was really kind of interesting and that's the wrong side. I like the really long ribbing, like it's a deep yeah. edge. Well, I wanted a bit deeper, but this is what she called for. So yeah, it's a deep one, but I think that it kind of highlights the look. It does. Oh so, yeah. And again, it's on the sleeves. 
nice around the neck. It's not as noticeable around the neck because you just do a little bit around the neck, right? But mm -hmm. it's still kind of, yeah, so I totally. Maybe I will have to knit that one. Well, do you, you know what? Do you know what? It's called Trilogy because she actually does it in three weights. Not three oh, weights, yeah. but they're the same weight when you mix them together. The one is Aaron Waite. Ta-da! The second one is DK and Mohair. Mm -hmm. And the third one, which I want to do, is basically three strands of fingering. Oh, okay. So you can change colors and kind of make it a, a fade, similar to this the snap hat by tin can knits remember we made that and you change one strand and it changed so i think that would be really neat to do it would be yeah good stash buster too <laughs> exactly for, for people who have a lot of fingering yeah so i thought that that was really cool like that was the first thing that i read and i said to her i said well i have the yarn to do either this one or this one and she chose this one for me to do which is good because i finally used up that yarn that's been in my stuff for 20 years. yeah yeah so awesome what was it called again i just want to make note of it it's called um the trilogy there's a trilogy of it and it's by this bird knits or annie Haas. okay hey. all right i'll i'll uh, make sure we have that in our notes yeah, like it, it's a fabulous, fabulous, it was a fabulous knit. It was easy. Um, sometimes when you do, um, I like seamless, right? So sometimes mm -hmm. it gets kind of monotonous, but the way she did around the neck was really interesting as well. And the okay. way she did all the increases, because when I was started, I was kind of like, I don't get it. It's how is this going to mathematically work? Do you know what I mean? But when you start working on it, it's like, oh, there goes the light. It's going to work perfect. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. I was, cool. I was, yeah, I was pretty impressed with it. I like it. Awesome. FO, FO. Do you have more FOs? You know what? That's me done for FOs. Sorry. Okay. I just have a couple more. Some of them are socks, but I have my sweater. Oh, you know what? I'll talk about Robbie's mitts next. I did post these on Instagram. I know not all of our subscribers are on Instagram, but, um, I just couldn't wait because I didn't know when we were going to try recording. So these are the gatekeeper cabled mitts. And if I do it like this, you can see the pattern. They're fingerless mitts, although you could just keep going and make them a mitt. If you've ever knit mitts before, that'd be easy. Um, I just love them. Love, love, love. The color is terrible in here today. Oh, they're, they're a little bit. I'll put my photograph in because I got, I captured the color really well in the picture mm -hmm. that I took. Um, these are in the architecture book, the pattern book. And I used Malabrigo Rios in the colorway, colorway 870 Candome. And it, I think of it as an oil slick color because it's dark. There's navy, there's a dark mossy greens some blues, some purples. So it really, it's like the color of an oil slick. It's, it's gorgeous. This is one of my favorite Malabrigo colorways. Um, and I had this in stash. I actually looked up in Ravelry and I bought this skein in uh, Gross Point, Michigan at the Wool and the Floss. And what year? A long Probably time ago. Be, well, four or five years ago, because it was on one of our road trips and we were, went away to... Um, I think when we went to Cedar Point, can't remember, but uh, yeah, so I, I just went stash diving. So I think, um, but yeah, I knit the size medium, so I cast on 40 stitches. I used a 3.5 millimeter for the worsted because um, I've knit other mittens and worsted, and I'm a loose knitter. You guys who have been watching for a while know that I knit loosely, so I usually go way down in needle size. And I do like my mitts. I don't like a lot of looseness. I like the. I don't like them sloppy. I like my mittens to fit. So these are just fantastic. I just love them. And I can, you know, maybe I could knit outside on a cold day wearing them. Although my fingertips would get <laughs> cold, but it would help. So I know absolutely. You I know you in the cold and you will be not be knitting with those outside in the cold. <laughs> it's an excellent pattern. It, his, it's charted. So any, any of the patterns in the book that would require a chart are charted. Um, yeah, it's just really well done. I loved it. So that's one of my whips. Do you want me to do the next one? Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, I showed this. No, that's one of my FOs, not whips. I showed this FO as a whip in our last episode, and I finished it fairly shortly after. So this is the Stone Avenue Cowl by Tammy Gore, um, Narrow Path Designs. And it's quite long, so we'll do a little... We'll do a flyby. <laughs> yeah, we'll just run it past the screen here. That's beautiful. That it's really turned gorgeous. out well, I love it. Yeah, so it calls for um, two colors. Um, I think these are actually really close to the colors that are in the the pattern sample on Ravelry. Um, so I chose a tonal and a speckle and then complementary mohair. So um, my yarns were the dark burgundy wine color here is a Lisianne yarns, one of a kind. So it didn't have, it was just a one of a kind that I picked up at one of the shows. Um, I don't know, that was probably at least a year ago that I bought it. So I don't know if she now has a color like this in her inventory, but um, it's beautiful. So if she does, then that's great. And then the speckly one, which I actually have a, not quite half a skein left, is gorgeous. This is Life in the Long Grass. And it's 100% Merino one ply. And the colorway is called Artifact. And I got this from Knit Stitch Stratford. Who carries life in the long grass? It's, you don't see life in the long grass in as many yarn stores in our area, right? But Suzanne carries it. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's from Ireland. This yarn is imported from Ireland. And then the mohair. Uh, I don't have, I don't have the leftovers here. There was a mohair that was um, dyed with it's blended in with the life in the long grass so you can't tell but the mohair was not a solid it was hand dyed and it had some burgundies and it like creamy yellows and other flecks in it and that was called cherry tart and that's also lizzie Ann yarns and it's kid silk lace base so it was 72 percent kid mohair 28 percent silk um so that's a really good silk content for mohair like it's nice and soft it's not as perky as some of the non-silk or lower silk percentage mohairs it's gorgeous. So basically there's, you know, stocking stitch, lace, stocking stitch with mohair, a little bit of alternating, brioche. Uh, so if you're, hey, okay. That's awesome. I'm dying to try brioche, but it scares the living bejeebies well, out of me. Yeah. And this is a great way to try brioche because it's a very small section mm -hmm. and it's in the rounds. It's just, um, you just go and then yeah so brioche is reversible but you wouldn't wear the rest you wouldn't wear this inside out but there's the brioche on the inside so i just love it oh i should put it on right i haven't photographed it i just was uh, weaving in the ends last night it's ample <laughs> so there's there's lots to this and i think it had some decreases in the last section to make it a little bit narrower at the top um so if you don't want a, a specific top or bottom you could just omit the decreases and make the whole thing just as wide but isn't that pretty but you know what else is useful is if you're out walking in the cold you can pull it up exactly right like that that's a consideration sometimes in sarnia with that breeze yes yeah 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 it's totally. really pretty i love it i just love it so yeah gorgeous beautiful pattern just easy well written Loved it. Oh, oh my gosh. Need a haircut. Look at this. <laughs> like everyone, I need a haircut. I can't see anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, my other ones are socks. Do you want me to care, just yeah. finish the FOs? Okay. Yeah, no, please. So these, these were whips from way back when that I just finally finished. And this was a sock tube yeah. that I had cranked. Yeah, see, this is what's left. Like, look at, if I fold this in half and hold up my, I could get another pair of socks just as long as these, longer. So two pairs of socks out of one sock tube. That's pretty good. So this was a sock tube that I um, paid someone to crank out for me. And this yarn 
is I had to go back to the notes from way back when to because I lost the tag. This wrong page. Okay, this yarn is by String Theory Color Works, and the colorway is called Thermal Luminescence. Um, I don't know if she's still dyeing this because it's it's at least a couple years old. And I can't remember, this might have been one of the ones that I bought from Adrian when she was destashing. I can't remember. Either that or I picked it up somewhere. But I love it. And then I used the, the green, which matches perfectly. The green are just some little minis that I picked up at one of the shows. Um, they're by Artful Yarns. I don't think it had a name. The purple is a mini skein from Leo and Roxy called Thrills, like the Thrills gum that I like and doesn't taste like soap. And it's, it's like a perfect match. So these are just super fun and they took no time. Like making socks out of a sock tube is excellent. Love it. I'm sorry, I, I have to interrupt. Thrills taste like soap. <laughs> they, don't. they don't. I love Thrills gum, which I found at Giant Tiger in Sarnia. So if you're looking for Thrills gum, that's where you could maybe find it. So that I finally finished, and then I finished my Homer socks. Yay! Awesome. So this is Homer by Timber Yarns. Sorry, they weren't blocked yet, so they haven't been put on a, a blocker. Let me let me lay this flat so you can see. So there's a there's a whole story about this. We talked about it a couple episodes back. It was inspired by a donut made in Sarnia at an independent coffee donut shop at Global Donuts in Delhi. They make a donut called the Homer. And uh, Heather from Timber Yarns loved it and was inspired to make a colorway. So this is the Homer. It's a donut with like pink icing and multicolored sprinkles, the kind that Homer Simpson likes. Um, I used Timber Yarns, I think this is dark pink, um, matching mini. And she, you can get minis in any of the colors. This is still available, I believe, on her website. Um, so you can do like the purple or the green. It's just now, fantastic. One thing I want to say is when you go on the website, she actually lists the colors. So you can click the color for a perfect, like for the, the match. The match. Yeah. yeah. She'll, yeah. She has links to the mini skein colorways that were used in the sock. So it's fantastic. She's keeping um, straight. She's keeping me on the straight and narrow. I make sure everything matches now. <laughs> and I did not make matchy matchy. If you look at them, what? When did that happen? I know. I actually, I think I got both of these out of like she divides her yarn into two fifty gram skeins so that and they're perfectly dyed like that. So that you can get perfectly matched socks. But I didn't want to cut into, because I made an ankle sock, and I didn't want to cut into the second skein if I didn't need to. So I just picked up where I left off and kept going. Um, yeah, so they. That's awesome. That is fraternal, so awesome. <laughs> fraternal twins, isn't it? So then right after um, the Homer, Heather put out uh, Chocolate Glazed. So if you oh. haven't seen that yet, I think we might have shown this last time, but it's. A chocolate donut version so you can also get this and then she's got look at the little progress keepers hang on go this way isn't that perfect I don't know where my pink one is but I have a I have the pink one for the homework so super fun I love those those were so fun to knit because the color just oh, colors are so much fun and so fast and, oh my gosh okay she put out a new one this week um, called Margarita? No, called te tequila. Tequila. Tequila or margarita? Tequila. Oh my gosh. Love it. It's bright. It screams summer patio. It's bright blues and aquas and bright green and oh, it's fantastic. So that's on my on my list to order from her as well. I think that's all for FOs. I need a sip of coffee because I've been talking so much. I'm using Ginger Snap, my Ginger Snap mug today. Yay. So you talk about whips. Okay, so for whips, I started the Timber Sweater, this one, by mm -hmm. Shannon Cook. And uh, I'm making it in Briggs and Little um, Heritage. 
and this will this will not surprise you. I'm heading back to my regular space. <laughs> so yeah, so I did it in the um, the medium gray. It's seamless. So I'm about where the pockets would be put in. Okay. Was, yeah. So and it's got the same stripe down the back. It's kind of like is this a, a test knit? No, this is one that I had in my queue and I really wanted to do. So I thought, meh. And it's been a pretty easy knit, pretty quick. And again, it's, but it's one of those ones where I think it's just gonna be like, there's, it's supposed to not close. So it's, yeah, I'm kind of awesome. excited to try it, see what it looks like. It's, um, yeah, pockets are, are, you, pockets are always fun. So yeah. You're going, you're going to put pockets? Yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> What's that? Pockets intimidate me. You know what? It's um, the first time I did them, I thought this isn't making sense, but I followed the directions step by step, and then it was like, oh, wow. So yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, did you want me to talk about another one, or do you? Yes. You... Yes. Go. Okay. So we. Don and I have spoke about the um, European road trip shawl mm -hmm. um, and how a very economic way to do it would be to use um, Coast uh, by Pulse Yarn. So I'm actually doing one for a friend who doesn't like to purl. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I'm using. I'm using the, I don't even know where the, whole scarn and it is the coast and it actually has 55 lambs wool and 45 cotton and for a 50 gram ball there's 383 yards yeah so the person that i'm knitting for is um about my height so they don't really need it that <laughs> that long, long so i have basically she gave me four skeins and this is all I have left of the second one. And this thing is. Wow. It's actually, you know what? I leave this thing laying around the house. And if I'm waiting for something, I'll knit a couple rows. Or if we go for a car ride and I don't need to think about anything, I'll knit a couple rows, you know, and it's just, it's really starting to add up pretty quickly. And at first I wasn't too sure about it because of the, um, weight difference, but I think this would be really nice for summer, like yeah. out on the boat or in the evening or whatever, because it's wide enough to wrap around your shoulders once it's locked. And I'm really kind of, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm surprised at how pleased I am with it. So I might actually have to make myself another one, but I don't mind curling, so it's okay. <laughs> but what, yeah. So. Hmm? What colorway is that? Um, I couldn't read it. Hold on a second. Got to get my old lady glasses on. Uh, passion flower so it's like a it's it's very interesting I don't know if you can see it because it's hang on I'll have to squish it together but it's very heathered with the blue and a purple and yeah so keep a little bit dark purple light purple so yeah it's it's, it's really pretty so yeah that's one and of course I have socks when don't I have one pair of socks on the go right so yeah so what are you doing uh, for whips, I have another pair of Robbie's mitts that I was hoping to get done for today, but I didn't. Um, another pair of fingerless mittens that just need thumbs. I'm done except for the thumbs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put them on so I can hold them up and show you. And these are the Urban, this Urban Aaron mitts. And they have a cable. Oh, the light in here is making me crazy. <laughs> they have a cable that starts in the cuff. Mm -hmm. and then crosses it the twists. Your hand. yeah isn't it gorgeous that's, pretty. that's gorgeous that's really nice. pretty there's some seed stitch i love it so i just have to do finish like a couple rows for the thumbs um these i used i actually used leftovers of my cascade eco plus the colorway is called a portal okay. okay. looks terrible it's a teal it's a gorgeous teal and this is leftovers from it's from your poncho isn't it yeah oh, yeah so i'll be able to wear i'm not going to put the poncho on over top of my sweater but um this is the poncho i did i just made it up like i don't know at least a year ago right has a cabled edge it just 
long rectangle that just hangs off one shoulder. And um, now I'll have matching fingerless mitts. Yay. Good job. That's nice. So, Urban Aaron Knits. And this is not in the architecture uh, book. It is a separate individual pattern. Okay. So, and I, in these, I did the size small because they, they're actually a bigger mitt and they call for Aaron weight. I did a size small and I also, because I think Eco Plus is a chunky, right? Yes. Bulky? Bulky. Yeah. So a little heavier than Aaron, but um, I think I used a 4.0. I did, I used a four millimeter needle. Cause again, that's how loose I knit. I can knit chunky on a four millimeter needle. So with the size small, they fit me quite fine. Um, Cause he was talking about, uh, he posted that he was talking about maybe trying it in a, I think a smaller weight or a smaller size, like for people with smaller hands, but these are a really nice fit for me. They're, they're just gorgeous. Okay, I'm laughing because I'm knitting the European road trip shawl and a four. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but you know, that, that road trip, it's got beautiful drape. Like I love the, the gauge you have. Yeah. So it's just funny, right? Yeah. And this isn't, it's not like super dense. It's, it's perfect. Like they'll be, they'll be nice and warm, these ones. So those, that's one whip. Um, what else do I have? Oh, oh. I have my hope, my breathe and hope shawl. Oh yeah, yeah, you just started that recently, didn't you? Yeah, it was. When was it released? It was released. Oh, on right at the end of April on um, local yarn shop day. Mm -hmm. So this is a pattern by Casapinka, and I think she's done this for the last few years. She puts out a a pattern for local yarn shop day, which is sold by participating LYSs um, who make kits, and then you get the pattern for free when you buy them in a certain period of time. And um, so she provides the pattern to the yarn stores. And then you can, after that date, you can get the pattern separately. Who's the pattern by? Casa Pinka. Can you say that again? I love that name. <laughs> Casa Pinka. I love it. <laughs> I'll put it in our drop down with the link. Um, so it's called Breathe and Hope. And it's a two color. She recommended, um, a solid and like a speckle or a variegated. So I did some playing around with skeins. I pulled out all the one ply, which is the top shelf right there is all my one ply, all the stuff that's in Ravelry so far. So I pulled all that down and just looked at colors and came up with um, the combination of right there. This is Cousteau. It's Madeline Tosh Merino Light. And this is, this is Deep Stash. And this is Dream in Color, uh, the Jilly Base, and the colorway is Dream Girls. So um, you can see they go together very nicely. They're, and there, I didn't buy a new kit this year, so I, I bought the pattern separately. Um, but these, these yarns were both purchased at my local yarn store, having this handmade. Um, they've just been in my stash for a bit. So this is the pattern now. Oh, I'll try and show you. Look at this. It's gorgeous. I'm loving how this is knitting up. So this pattern has, um, it's not garter. There's, it's a slightly mod, a slight modification to garter stitch, but same idea. Like it's striped. There's sections of striping two colors and then sections of these vertical stripes which are not brioche they are slip stitches so they're very easy and then more stripes more brioche more stripes i don't want to give it all away but in the stripe section there is it's a little bit of a texture to it so it's a little different than just plain garter and it kind of gives it a really squishy texture like it it makes it really squishy and and a little bit feels thicker but it's just got beautiful squish so when I block this out it's gonna look beautiful um my first section though I just did straight garter because at first I wasn't sure about this squishy <laughs> garter I was like I don't know about that because when it was a little wee piece it just looked weird so I just did straight garter for my first section and then I thought I'll give this squishy stuff a try and I didn't mind it later on so I'm actually almost done I'm on my last um 
slip stitch section. And then I think there's just a little wee bit of um, like the squishy garter after. And the bind off, it's not, it doesn't really look like Pico, but it kind of does. Like there's something with the bind off. I haven't like okay. read that far. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And there are beautiful, like the, the, the people that are posting their, their whips or their FOs, they're just gorgeous. It's, you can, you can turn two yarns into like a masterpiece with this pattern. So that's on my needles. Oh, you know what, Lisa? I got a set of the Chow Goo Twist. Nice. Yeah. So I've been using those. I used it on this Casapinka shawl. Mm -hmm. And did I use it on something else? I had the sock before, but now I'm, yeah, I think this is the first project where I'm using the larger ones. Nice. And it's, I love this set because it comes in a really good range of sizes. Do you, you have this, this set too, right? No. Just the small ones. Yep. Okay. So if you get the set, it goes from a 2.75 millimeter to a 10 millimeter, like in terms of tips. <laughs> Look at that. And because of the range of sizes of tips, there's two different size cords. So there's a, because mm -hmm. the joins have to, um, you can't have a join obviously that's going to be too big for the small little wee needles. So there's the small cords and the large cords and the small cords fit up to, they come with a chart. It's a four or five millimeter. And then the larger tips need the large cord. And then you can get the cords in different sizes, but there is an adapter. So you have the adapter, right? Um, I only have the minis. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I only have the mini cords because I only have the mini sizes, right? Okay. And this isn't the mini cord. These are their regular cords. That's the but, small. But, there's the mini, small, and large. Yeah. I have the mini like on my socks. Yeah. But for this set, it doesn't come with the mini. So, and then I actually ordered a couple of longer ones. Um, so I could use it on my next sweater if I want, like it'll be big enough. Yeah. I just got those from Little Red Mitten. I ordered some cords from them. Yeah. So that was really a good little find and I'm liking them. Um, I still love, I still love my, my Knitter's Pride wood. I love my Licka wood. I'm pretty easygoing and you know, it depends what yarn it is. It like that totally right? depends on what yarn it is. I would never yeah. do a silk with with the metal because you'll be chasing those stitches as they run down and yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it is you know pretty slippery um but i like it and i i have used other metal like other than socks i do have some other metal needles i just don't use them all the time like with this one with the mohair and the fingering um i use my wood tip i think i use my lick for these can't remember probably yeah i have a hard time because i have um tons of addies yeah right tons of addies so when i have i usually have the size i need but yeah i yeah used to love those so super fun mm -hmm. super fun um trying to think is that all i have oh no there's oh i do have another fo or a whip not fo whip i want to mention this because it's just so pretty um songbird fibers she's an ontario dyer uh, Vicky and two dollars from all her all of her yarn colorways are inspired by birds and she nails them and um, when you buy a skein of yarn two dollars from every purchase is donated to Birds Canada and they're an organization that does um, advocates for bird conservation and education and um, she just has beautiful yarn so she had a sale I think it might have been a shipping sale. I can't remember. Back in, I can't remember, March or April. <laughs> and I uh, I ordered some yarn. So this is called, if I'm saying it right, Roseate Spoonbill. And this beautiful bird looks like a cross between a flamingo and a stork and a heron. Oh, that's that gorgeous. Term? Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So that's the bird. And this is the yarn. And it is just beautiful. I needed something. This was back when like real isolation really, we really locked down here in Sarnia, right? So I just needed something bright and cheerful and sunny and spring has been dragging its heels. And this yarn did the trick. So here I go. I've got one sock done. 
That's pretty. Easy feel. I'm going to do the heel in the same color. And this yarn is called, or this pattern is Santa Baby. And it's by Christy Houghton, who is Yarn Cafe Creations. But it's just a beautiful, look at that. That's pretty. Super easy, super memorable. Um, you know, do two repeats and you've got the pattern down. Um, and it's easy to read. If you forget what row you left on, you can tell by where the eyelets, they kind of alternate. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm really, I have to get finishing those now. Um, it's funny that you mentioned spring because yeah. I swear every time I go to the market, like the little market, I, I bring home tulips. Oh, I can't. Tulips are my favorite. I have a tattoo of tulips and I can't have them because Marvin eats them. Mine, mine doesn't bother with them. I have some in the kitchen. I have some in each bedroom. I have some in the, on the dining room table. I just love them. This time of year when you need to pick me up and they last forever and they can, they're the only flower I know of that continue to grow. Yeah, they do. Them, right. We actually, we had them in at our wedding. We had them in our centerpieces. Yeah. We had like bigger clear glass. I think they were rectangular clear glass. And so there was supposed to be a tulip just inside. And the florist Ooh. actually said, um, like, we're cutting these shorter because by tomorrow morning, they're going to be two inches taller. Like, like, they'll grow. So, yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Like uh, the first time my husband picked them up for me this year, he's like, these aren't going to open. They're just little bullets. And I'm on the phone. I'm like, no, trust me, they'll open. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. But for, I have one more. One more. This is a long-term whim. Okay. Um, I've been using it when we do like Zoom knitting with friends because it's just easy to knit while I talk so I don't um, like make a royal mess of my knitting. But it's, it's just going to be a long wrap. So it's kind of the same width as maybe a little narrower as the European road trip. Um, but I've put a lot, I think when I started two months ago, I wasn't finished the first skein. So I've done that much more. And the pattern is Seaside Stroll Baby Blanket. And it's a free pattern by Espace Tricot. And I just modified it and made it narrower so that I could turn it into um, a long rectangular wrap. Nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a creamy, like a natural, but it's like a creamy. It almost has a yellowy tint to it. And this, this yarn, oh my gosh. This yarn is the Illimani. Is that the stuff that hubby picked up for you? Yes, that your hubby picked up. Hang on, I'm going to get the skein that has the details. It has alpaca. It's the Illimani, the Sabri base, which is 85% organic cotton and 15% baby alpaca. This is a fingering weight. Uh, your typical 400 meters. And it's amazing. Just the softness of it. Oh my gosh. Like it feels like a cotton, but then that alpaca just makes you it You know what? Super I really love the color it is. Like I've seen the color in person and it's a beautiful natural. Yeah. Well, alpaca, right? Like, yeah, they have natural, like there's other tones. It's not all this only one color. Mm -hmm. And I think there's other bases too, if in this, in the Illimani brand. And I just love this. So we got this at um, True North Yarns, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is in Barrie, Ontario. We got it going up to um, when we went to the girls weekend. And then we had to stop on the way back for more because I needed more sweater yarn and they didn't have any. So that's last summer. Mm -hmm. So hubby had to pick yours up and my sweater quantity. <laughs> Thank you, hubby. Cause he, 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 at the time he was going to yeah. Barry like weekly. So yeah, worked out perfectly. So yeah, I won't, I've got, uh, of course I have other whips. I'm not gonna talk about them all. So that's it for our FOs and our whips, right? Yep, that's it. Okay. So the only other thing, I do have a few acquisitions because uh, I have been ordering a few things. And I know you have an acquisition. So uh, do you, I've just been talking. Do you want to show your latest acquisition? I have one. That's all I got. I've been trying to use my stash as much as possible. And to be honest, I have not been knitting a lot because we've been painting and doing stuff around the house. But that I couldn't resist this. I just, I, I could not resist. <laughs> I tried. It is the Timber Yarns um, 
hero colorway. And I just fell in love with those colors. And I even bought a dark pink, which is how I knew your Homer was dark pink. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. They're beautiful. Um, like, look at that, isn't it? Yeah. It's just gorgeous. gorgeous. It's amazing. Yeah. So that's only, she released that about a week ago, I think, right? Yeah. That color? Yep, yep, yep. Um, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's got, it's about um, heroes, about the essential workers. Mm -hmm. And the little Dewey says stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, the little dingle dop? What does it say? What are all the words? Oh, hang on, I gotta get my real glasses. <laughs> there, look at that. <laughs> um, it says, serve, caring, giving, support, selfless, essential worker, helpful, integrity, community, time, involvement, hero. Wow. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think each color represents a different um, career, like in terms of yeah. people that are frontline workers and, and taking care of all of us. So yeah, I can't remember what they all said now, but what do you think the blue stands for? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I know there was like, there was police fire. Well, there, um, I, there's blue and there's red. Yeah. So, so the, that I'm might be police. Sure the, fire. Yeah. And then yeah, pink and green and yellow and I don't know. I was Everything. Nip, nip, nip. Covers it all. I know, right? And it's beautiful. Yeah. Like they're just gorgeous together. And I don't have it here, but her mom writes the most beautiful notes. She does. It's just, uh, it's like I said yeah. to you, I would like for to give her a pad of paper and write to do list at the top. <laughs> and then another pad, groceries. <laughs> you have the fanciest grocery list in town. I know, right? <laughs> I have a few acquisitions. What have you got? Um, well, I, when, I, when I ordered from Songbird, mm -hmm. so what happened was there, I was planning on going to Knit City, Montreal. Yes. And there were a couple of vendors that I really had like intentions of buying from. Like, you know, I've been watching them online and I, I was sort of saving up for when I go to Montreal and I can see everything in person, then I'll buy from them. So <coughs> they both had shop ideas. So um, they had shop updates and that's when I ordered. So Songbird Fibers um, was one of them. Mm -hmm. So when I ordered the Roseate Spoonbill, um, then I also ordered Nickel Bar Pigeon. Look at this pigeon. <laughs> and look at this yarn with all, it's just, it's beautiful. There's like oh, some copper in there. there. Yeah. I love it. So this is this I was I I think I've been admiring this color for a while because she posts it every now and then. And I just love it. Um so that was the other one I ordered from her. And then she just released a new colorway about a week ago, and I just got this yesterday, and it is Snowy Owl. I saw that one. Yeah. That one is so pretty. I love that she had the thing uh she had it knit up so you could see what it looks like yes and there's like tiny bits of yellow for his eyes mm -hmm. and this is not speckled she actually painted the the black the little black pieces like they're hand painted so it's a hand painted not just a random speckled um it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful so i had to i had to get this snowy owl right so and again two dollars from every purchase um Vicky also sells sock tubes, cranked sock tubes on her website. So nice. you can, you can actually order those from her, uh, which is really awesome. And I can't remember if there's mini skeins cause I just needed these. So yeah, I'm so excited about those. Very happy with those. Um, I also ordered from Shirley Bryan because she, she sort of, um ventured into some self-striping and gradient sock yarns oh nice and, yeah she was posting those online before knit city and i definitely had those in mind to check out so she had a, a shop update one weekend and i ordered some so this is one of the gradients 
So it's hard to tell in the skein, but it goes from this sort of salmon pink mm -hmm. down into the dark tealy blue. This is a, called Deconstructed Fade and whiskey in a teacup. So well, there you go. So I ordered that one. And she's doing some self-striping and she had some really pretty colorways that caught my eye. So her Sojourn self-striping sock, I ordered It's a Dolly World. Look at all these colors. Aren't those pretty? And then this really pretty kind of a mulberry burgundy mini skein. So these, these are sets that come with the mini skein. And then this one was just the skein, um, Soulmate Self-Striping Sock. And it is called Tesseract and it's a navy suit, George. Like navy, but spelled differently. Whatever. It's got speckles, so that's cool. There's speckled stripes in it. So there's definitely a beautiful navy in here and all these other different colors. There's some lime green and some fuchsia and some orange. It was beautiful. Sorry, Becky, but I kind of butchered the reference on the name. What do I know? I'm just a knitter. Leo and Roxy for their birthday. Um, so they usually do like a birthday anniversary colorway. Well, this year they called it Frontline. And they donated 25%. Instead of like, you know, giving us a deal or whatever, they paid it forward, which I love. So 25% went to the frontline workers in St. Thomas. Like they donated to a local yeah. organization. So there is beautiful royals and sky blue and some purpley in there. And then I ordered the purple mini skein to go with it. Nice. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just love it. So I was really happy to support that effort and uh by their birthday colorway because this uh, i know they did take additional orders but i i believe it's going to be like a limited time colorway uh yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> nice nice but you know what their subscription like the once a month thing my mother is so happy with it that she's gone and she's ordered another six months oh good for her well my dad ordered it for her but yeah oh she's nice. loving it so that's awesome. nice to hear yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little red mitten. I think on Monday yarn stores will be able to do curbside pickup again, which is right. great. Nice. Well, yes. somebody said the garden centers are allowed to be open as of to today. Today at eleven. Yeah. Yeah. So that's with with, with appropriate social distancing, they, they are allowing in store shopping. I noticed that um well it was funny because I I only have my garden is one of those low maintenance ones and I have the two pots. So I ordered all the stuff from Sipkins to pick up the pots. That was easy. You just pulled them to the spot, told them your order, they left it there and you put it in your truck. I'm like, mm -hmm. I could, I could do this. Yes. So I can't, I can't live without my going into the yarn stores. I can't live without going to see my friends, but I'm finding I spend, a, um, I don't spend as much money because I'm not like, Oh, look at that. Oh, look at yeah. that. Right? Like there's not as much impulse buying, especially in the groceries. Yes. Right? And it's a time saver. This curbside pickup, I'm actually kind of liking it because you order, you wait till it's ready, and then you just go get it. And it's fairly quick. And the only one that wasn't a time saver was Canadian Tire. They're, they're a bit slower. And they, you know, I don't know that they're a bit slower, but they just like, it's all busy, jam packed and busy. But I mean, yeah. I've ordered from Home Depot a number of times and go in, get it, you're done. Um, yeah. Same with the garden center and the grocery stores, but just, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how quickly stores have adapted and modified just, their practices. It's not um, just stores. It's everything that's adapted so fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like it's just so many people have kind of companies and people have adapted. It's just, it's, yeah, human, it's the human spirit, right? Yeah. Hey, when you were talking about, I know we're just about done here. When you were talking about the going to the gro like market, like for produce and stuff, yeah. reminded me, I just want to do a little plug. I, I shared this on Instagram, but I want to do a little plug for this cookbook. It's called Buck Naked Kitchen. Yeah. I follow her on Instagram. Yeah. So the, the author of this, of this book right here, mm -hmm. Kirsten, Kirsten Buck, Buck is her last name. And it's um, recipes are all like, I think they're all whole 
the whole food, the whole 30 mm -hmm. endorsed. Um, she, she, she tags all her recipes if they are gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, whole 30. They aren't all ticking all those boxes, but whatever boxes each recipe ticks, she lists that. Mm -hmm. And there's just everything like they're, the photography is absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to, there's a white Tuscan bean dip. Nice. Gorgeous. It's a beautiful book. And so this, I'm, I'm, I picked it up. I've been following her. This girl is actually, um, uh, she's of First Nations heritage, and she is from my hometown in northern Manitoba. So she originally is from the Paw. She lives in Winnipeg now, I believe. And they're, they're just awesome, kind of everyday recipes. Like there's Cobb salad, and there's yeah. actually a recipe for borscht. I was following her, following her on Instagram. She seems to be very down to earth. Like she's yeah. not going to ask you to find the dark truffle that is only grown in the, you know, later months in the dark forest in the back of Austria um, Alps, right? Like yes. she's done, yeah. it's real food, real stuff. You can go in and buy anything in the grocery store, not yeah. a specialty shop. And she talks about sort of the provenance of some of the recipes and how some of them were family recipes that she's just modified a little bit to, to make them um, align with, you know, whole food or to make them align with dairy or gluten free. Yeah. And you certainly don't have to make it dairy or gluten free. If you don't want to, you can, but no, they're just, it, they're just, it's an excellent, excellent book. So I just want to put a plug because she's, you know, also from Northern girl and it's a beautiful book. Right. Naked kitchen. I like you there. That's a good play on names. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Love it. Uh, so that's about it, I think. Hey, are we done? I think we are. I think we're done. I think I might have to drive by your house and airdrop this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably won't be um, editing until tomorrow. So it's Friday when we're recording. I'll try and get this up Saturday or Sunday sometime this weekend. As long as we didn't mess it up. <laughs> as long as we didn't mess it up. If it works. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine we've just sat here for two hours talking and. No, oh. it's still recording. It is recording. We're back really quick because when we were finishing up two days ago, we totally forgot to say goodbye. <laughs> and I was just editing and realized we didn't say goodbye. So hi again. And uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> hi bye <laughs> thanks for watching thanks for joining us again we hope you're all safe and well and just enjoy whatever you're if you're finding time to make something whatever it may be just that's great just make time to make something Lisa? Right. take care happy knitting and join us in on our Ravelry group we've got a couple of knit alongs and check us out on Instagram and we'll see you soon right. take care bye Bye.